do you try to incorporate medical medium like nutrition with your clients like how how does that play out with with your um, I'm, clients I'm stuff? really honest with everyone um, however I I really don't push mothers to do much um, you know I I give advice you know or I you know I just try to hey dates are good um, my last client, she, she ate dates and butter. All right. Look, and I didn't tell her anything about it. I didn't get on this soapbox about butter and dates and insulin resistance and stuff like that because she didn't want to hear it. She wasn't going to hear it, you know, and she, right. and she was a very self-directed woman. So it just depends on where the family is. Um, I show up as you need me to be, you know, and I don't show up, I show up differently for everyone. So if someone is looking for that, you know, of course, I'm like, you know, like really the body and nutritional stuff. I mean, that's really my first passion. It's really hilarious that I got thrown into birth and then opened up to MM info. And I think the universe was trying to show me MM info, but I had missed it because of that, that stupid documentary, Heal, um, made by Hay House. I don't know if y'all have watched it, but it does not represent Anthony in the way that it should. And yeah. I remember seeing Anthony on that and then being like, oh, I got to look at him later. But he was easy to forget about. And then that whole documentary yeah. went on about how you can just, like, heal with just thinking about healing. Yeah, and it thing. just, yeah. yeah, I hate that documentary. <laughs> I, um, how did you end up, like, you know, diving into the medical medium info. When did you get into that? Um, well, so I got sick when I was 18 with a virus and I swore when I was 18 years old that I was going to learn how to cure viruses. Like, like that was my passion. I was going to go to school to be a doctor. Every college class I had ever taken was geared towards becoming a doctor or a healer or, you know, all of my books that are in my storage that are taking up a fourth of my 10 by 10 storage that I pay $150 a month for are books. You know, um, my partner frequently likes to make fun of me for it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm 34 this year, 34. <laughs> So it's been 15 years of this. Um, and in 2018, uh, which is when I had my son, right at the beginning of that, well, maybe like November 2017, I had found keto. And so I was really on that whole like keto and, and it seemed to make sense, you know, and I went to the farmer's market and I bought everything in season. I bought halal meat and, um, and I thought I was doing the best of the best I could do. And, you know, I was a coffee drinker. I had really severe PTSD from a trauma because the morning that I woke up from that trauma, I, the night before I drank an entire bottle of alcohol. So I was extremely glucose deficient. It really scarred my brain. Um, Medical Medium talks about in his brain book how you can have calluses and scarring from PTSD. And I was like, that is me. Um, so by the time, honestly, it's so funny. Birth is so transformative and so many people embark on, in, in the journey of birth for so many reasons. And for me, I wanted my life to change. I wanted a different life. I didn't want to be obsessed with my PTSD anymore. And, you know, I was done with going out and being a young person. So I decided I was going to have a baby and that that was going to make me better and it really didn't um <laughs> it was wonderful and i had a really great i really i did have a good birth you know i was very lucky um but things were getting worse you know because birth is the most adrenal heavy process on the planet i was still drinking coffee my baby screamed at me frequently um i was doing the keto diet and in 2020 i was standing in my kitchen and there was just like a voice. There was something in my head, call it intuition, call it a spirit guide. I don't know what it was. It definitely wasn't spirit of compassion. I, you know, it wasn't as 
auditory as what medical medium here is, but it was like something inside my head was like, you're doing it wrong. You need to look at a plant-based diet. And I was like, no, you're insane. Whoever you are, you're wrong. You're wrong. And that's not correct. Science and research says that we need meat and what I'm doing should be fine. Like why? And that was the whole thing is I was, the whole reason I was having that conversation in my head is because I was so unwell. I, I constantly looked like I was like six months pregnant. I was bloated all the time. I mean, I would eat three, four bowls of dinner at night. I was so hungry in the evening. My chest and my face were redder than ever. I was, my PTSD raged to a point where like, I just couldn't even listen to my dog drink water out of the water bowl because the auditory, it would give me like this auditory tick, like the lapping, it would just drive me nuts. I hated it. And just, and I'm still pretty auditory sensitive. Like if my son's like overly loud or slamming things on the floor, I, I'm like, dude, chill. Like I can't deal with it. Like it, my nerves are, I'm very edgy. And, um, and yeah, I just, I was literally grinding my, literally and figuratively grinding my teeth to the stop sign every day. And, you know, I was getting up in the morning, making my cute little kettle of coffee on the stove with my heavy whipping cream and no, no sugar, but lots of heavy whipping cream and had to be warm and, (laughs) and then like feeding my kids eggs, like here, eat as many eggs as you guys can buying four dozen eggs a week from the store and just. I was just so miserable. Everybody was miserable. Like I'm the queen bee of this house. You know, my, my partner was telling me yesterday, he's like, when you're upset, like it affects everyone, you know, like you are, you have the biggest presence in this house. And so when I got that message and it's just funny because 2020 was just such a transformative year for everybody. And I felt like the energetic door that was around the universe, like, you know, normally, and I think it's kind of back to that way today like you have to kind of knock on the door and say like hey universe I'd like to talk to you I'd like to have a conversation and they're like who's there and it's like it's me you know can I can we have a talk and they're like oh yeah come in you know let's talk but like in 2020 I was just like inundated all the time with like these spiritual messages and that was a really big one was like you need to look at a plant-based diet and I just I just thought that was the craziest thing ever um because you know, I had looked at veganism before and I mean, there are a lot of shit looking vegans out there. There are a lot of shit looking plant-based people too. And I can't take advice from anybody who's got bags on their eyes and they're balding and they're skinny. Like they're in the unhealthy skinny, you know, like it just, even Dr. Robert Morris, you know, I listened a lot to him and if and he's a guy who's really big about talking about fruit and how healthy it is, but he doesn't, he's not very healthy looking. I mean, he's the big guy sitting behind a desk and he doesn't give you any more information than like eat fruit it doesn't make sense he doesn't give you any pathology any physiology about the body at all and if if he does he charges for it it's not free because i looked um and then i found dr sebi's work and dr sebi just doesn't make sense either because he's like don't eat bananas and sweet potatoes and i live in new orleans those are like two main foods here we grow sweet potatoes and we have bananas like You know, and that's poor people food, you know, you can't tell me not to eat that. And it just, I don't know how I found medical medium. I found him somehow online. I found his podcast. The first thing I listened to was the chocolate coffee matcha tea episode. And it struck home as hard as it could because I had been, again, just inundated with these messages. I was, you could ask my partner. I was telling him like, stop bringing me chocolate. Cause I, cause I was trying to quit the coffee cause I knew it wasn't good for me on some intuitive level. And cause I had cut down all the way to that one cup. And when you cut down that far, when you have that one cup, you become really sensitive to it. And I noticed how crazy it made me. And so I, you know, I'd have a little decaf or something. It still made me nuts. And I was just going through like a whole chocolate bar every day, you know, like, subbing those cravings you know not really I mean I knew that there was caffeine but it wasn't to the degree I know it to be now based on medical information so now I don't have any more gout in my foot I don't bloat anymore I'm not starving at at night you know it's my face is not red like I go to the bathroom like a normal person like it just Mm -hmm. You don't need your coffee I mean, to, to to go to the bathroom in the morning. Oh, 
I wasn't even really going to the bathroom with the coffee, you know, like I, I don't think I ever realized how <laughs> it's, it's just so funny to say because it, nobody talks about it. I don't think I ever realized in my entire life how good it felt to be clear. And it's so funny. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure your son is like this too. When they go to the bathroom, they empty out the entire length of their intest, their large intestines. It's like one large fluid piece. And it yeah. blows my mind. And he'll do this, like, I mean, he goes to the bathroom every time he eats a big meal, you know? And yeah. so he's doing at least one of those a day, sometimes twice a day. And I'm like, how do you have yeah. this much food in you, dude? <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> yeah. So That's very grateful. I, I think about, I think about the next generation, right? Like we didn't have this info when we were growing up. So we just ate that standard American diet. Right. But this mm-hmm. next generation, like our son, he's a hundred percent medical medium, does his celery, does the heavy metal, does, you know, does all, everything to a T like, like we do. And so I'm curious what the kid's going to be like in like, you know, nine years, once that liver is completely cleared out. You know, if he's going to have some sort of like intuitive gift or powers or, you know, something like that, that we just never had access to because we were just polluting our bodies every day. I know the supernatural gifts. I'm like, oh, like I daydream about those all the time and just (laughs) what it could be like. And I, I already see it so much with him just to even reel it back to birth like if you have an undisturbed birth that that part of your brain like your your brain is not when you have an undisturbed birth you don't have that traumatic you don't have ptsd from your birth and so you're able to forge this supernatural connection with your child and i was able to do that medical medium or not and like one of my favorite stories to tell, but he'd do it all the time, even as an in, as an infant, you know, we would always have this telepathy. Like I always knew exactly what he wanted or needed. And he even told me when he was, um, when he was a baby, he was like, mommy, I eat fruit. He didn't verbally tell me this, but even though I was like all crazy about keto and stuff, I wasn't going to deny my baby of a banana. I just kept breastfeeding him because I was like, oh, I need to make sure you're getting your protein because like, you don't got teeth yet. But I heard him tell me, like, Mommy, my first food is fruit, you know, because that's what I can chew. And I won't have the teeth to be able to chew and break apart meat until I'm, like, two. So this is what you feed me. This is my first food. And I was like, okay. So I fed him bananas and sweet potatoes, (laughs) which was not part of the keto diet at all. But I wasn't going to deny my child, and I believed him, you know. And that's, like, that's the power of an undisturbed birth, you know, like you keep your intuition intact. You are intact as a person, you know, you keep that spiritual connection. And, um, I remember when he was like about two years old, I set him up on the counter and I keep all my Vimergy supplements, like where you would keep plates at, um, in the little cabinet right there next to my stove. And I set him up there and the cabinet was open and I looked at the zinc and I was, I only thought to myself, I was like, and we haven't taken zinc in a couple days. I, I really, we need to do that. And he stands up on the counter, pulls it down and hands it to me. And I'm like, okay, dude, wow. <laughs> he does that all the time. Like I'll pull out my homeopathy. I have a, you know, an emergency kit for homeopathy that I bring with me to birth and I'll bring it over to my friend's house, whoever. And, and he's done this more than one occasion. I'll open it up and out of a hundred, he'll pull the one that either I need or he needs. And it just, it blows my mind every time he does it. I just, he, he does it all the time. Even just the other day, I was trying to remember to tell my stepdaughter what he did, but he was giving me instructions. I was trying to figure out how to do something. And he was like, well, why don't you try this? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I want to try that. And it was right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. Kids are smart. Yeah. 